Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to my series on debunking the Disinformation Dozen. The Disinformation Dozen is a group of 12 individuals identified by the Center for Countering Digital Hate as being responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. And in this series, I'm going to show you why they deserve the title of Disinformation Dozen. We're hitting the home stretch in this ninth episode where I'll be covering Dr. Rashid Buttar. Now, Dr. Buttar is someone I've covered on this channel before. He's a real doctor, but by the end of this video, I'm going to show you why he really shouldn't be any doctor at all. But before we get to that, I'm going to go over some of the anti-vaccine and COVID denial claims that he makes in some of his live streams. These claims are all easily disproven, but they are quoted and repeated endlessly as if they're truth. Let's get into just how bad these claims are. Now with the COVID vaccine, it's based upon an mRNA, it's a messenger RNA vaccine, and people just don't understand what that means, but RNA is what repairs and rewrites your DNA. As I've covered several times on this channel and in this Disinformation Dozen series itself, COVID vaccines are not going to change your DNA. They cannot do that. And he's wrong when he says that RNA edits and rewrites your genome. It does not do that. But like most misinformation that latches on, it does have a little grain of truth. There are mechanisms in your cells that use RNA in order to help repair DNA. A good example of this is telomerase. It's an enzyme, not RNA, that uses RNA that is very specific to help it repair certain segments of the genome after the cell is done dividing. This RNA has to be very specific enough to complex with telomerase so that telomerase can use it in its function of repairing the genome. It's not going to do this with just any old RNA. But this is just one of many things that Dr. Buttar just completely makes up. And the number of people that have had adverse reactions just up until Christmas 2020 was over 5,000 people, and the media is censoring that. People that have had paralysis, people have had Bell's palsy, people that have had incapacity to work anymore and are bedridden for three, four, five days. Yes, I'm sure we all remember during the COVID vaccine clinical trials when cases of Bell's palsy were being reported by the media. But what you might not have learned from the media is that those cases turned out to be not significant, meaning they didn't occur at any rate greater than the placebo group. This means that Bell's palsy is something that's going to just happen to people naturally, with or without a vaccine. Furthermore, all cases of Bell's palsy that occurred within either the placebo group or the vaccine group in the clinical trials went away on its own. It resolved itself. It was not super serious. And then going on to the higher incidence of HIV that's already been reported now and, and published. What? No, no such thing has been reported. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about something I covered before in this old video I did on James Corbett. Go check that out if you're interested, but the gist of it is... This idea has nothing to stand on. And on top of that, the number of deaths that have occurred that nobody's talking about. What are all of these deaths that no one is talking about? People who make these claims can never be specific. Scientists monitor vaccines very closely post-market in order to catch any signs of unusual deaths or symptoms associated with people who get the vaccine. This is how we were able to catch those rare blood clots that were associated with Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines. If there were any other unusual deaths happening in relation to these COVID vaccines, then Dr. Rashid Buttar would have all the evidence he needs in order to back up his claim. But he doesn't have any evidence. He's just making stuff up. Why would you put mercury or formaldehyde or nickel into a vaccine under the pretense of increasing the immune response well, mercury is no longer in childhood vaccines, so you don't have to worry about that. Formaldehyde is there as a preservative to prevent bacterial growth, which I'm sure you don't want in your vaccines. And nickel is not in any vaccines. Again, he's making stuff up. I seriously don't know where he got that from. And then why would you give it at a time, in a, in, I'm talking about children, not babies. Why would you give it at a time when they're born, when we know that the body can't even seroconvert till the at least minimum of first six months of life? potentially up to from a year to three years. And some immunologists will say that your immune system isn't fully developed till you're in a 10, 12, 13, 14 adolescent time frame. You can almost see it in his brain as he's making these things up. No, babies absolutely have a functional immune system. It might not be fully developed, but it's functional. 
In fact, even before babies are born, they're able to have immune responses where they produce antibodies and their T cells respond to antigens as well. So they can absolutely have immune responses to vaccines as they should and be able to fight off those vaccine preventable diseases. I mean, if you just think about it for a moment, if a baby didn't have any immune system, then any baby that is not breastfed by its mother would be in serious trouble. Think of every time your infant puts their hands in their mouth or otherwise comes into contact with germs that are everywhere throughout our environment. It wouldn't stand a chance. So yes, babies do absolutely have an immune system and Rashid Buttar is just plain old fear-mongering. Textbook for this disinformation dozen group, isn't it? Well, every year we have 1.5 million people die from tuberculosis, but nobody made a big deal out of that. A lot of people do make a big deal out of that. You're just privileged enough to not have to see that suffering every day. Tuberculosis is a disease caused by a bacteria that is both preventable by a vaccine and treatable by antibiotics. Both of those things are not readily available to everybody in the world. So in parts of the world that don't have good access to medical care, that's where those deaths happen. So now they're going to roll out a vaccine. A vaccine that is supposedly so effective that you have to take it again within two months. It's called a booster shot, Rashid. You see, in medical school, you should have learned about the primary and secondary immune responses. The primary response is much weaker than the secondary response. You really need that secondary response if you want to build memory towards a pathogen. And that memory is what we're aiming for with a vaccine. So you get a booster. And let's talk about this vaccine, because social distancing is supposed to prevent the spread of disease, and a face mask is supposed to prevent the spread of disease. Because you could wear a face mask walking into a restaurant, but this virus is so sophisticated that it knows that, hey, wait a second, when the person sits down and takes off the mask to eat, we can't attack them. I have seen COVID deniers and anti-maskers repeat this ad nauseum. Look, taking off your mask to eat in a restaurant is not science. No scientist ever said that was safe. That's simply the restaurant industry trying to run their businesses as best they can while reducing risk as much as they can. The face mask and the social distancing weren't enough. So if you're taking the vaccine because those two things weren't enough, then why are you still mandating that people, even though they take the vaccine, still need to wear a face mask and still need to social distance? Either the face mask and social distancing don't work, or the vaccine doesn't work. Yes, it's common to have multiple safety measures in place in order to stay as safe as possible. It's like asking why a car needs an emergency brake or airbags when it has a seatbelt. It's like he just doesn't even think about these things, but people repeat it, and it's just wild to me. This is exactly what happened in Nazi Germany, World War II, less than 80 years ago, same, or 85 years ago, whatever it was, same exact thing. This is said far too often, and it's disgusting. You're being asked to take basic public health measures in order to protect your community against an infectious disease. That is nothing like the horrors that happened during World War II in Nazi Germany. Now, I know that people have lost their jobs to lockdowns and so forth. That should never have happened. But to compare your blatant misunderstandings of basic scientific concepts surrounding things that ultimately should have been minor inconveniences in your life to one of the most horrible genocides in recent history, that's just straight up delusion. Before I close this episode, I want to make you aware that Rashid Buttar should not be a doctor. Why? Because he treats his cancer patients with insanely expensive treatments, and he's just cheating them out of their money. Rashid Buttar has been reprimanded multiple times by medical boards and the FDA. Here is a transcript of one of his court cases, where one of his cancer patients went to him for treatment, and instead of getting actual cancer therapies, they received things like hydrogen peroxide injections, which Rashid Buttar charged them tens of thousands of dollars for. Much of that, he asked them to pay up front. This guy is slimy. He is absolutely deserving of the title disinformation dozen and absolutely not deserving of the title doctor. And the saddest part is that a lot of those patients ended up not making it. So if you see people sharing Rashid Buttar stuff anywhere on the internet, make sure you let them know that that's the guy who charges his patients tens of thousands of dollars 
for him to inject them with hydrogen peroxide. Absolutely disgusting. Thanks for watching this. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking Christiane Northrup in the 10th episode of this series. See you then. Thank you.